Hi, thank you. Doors off. Okay. Design is the creation of a plan or convention for the construction of an object, system, or measurable human interaction. An open source is something that people can modify and share because its design is publicly accessible. So, open source design is the design whose design is publicly accessible? I believe it's much more than that, and I'm here to convince you about that. I am Michael Dimitriou. I'm involved in both open source and design for a good 10 years now, and I believe that open source design should help users to exercise the freedom that open source provides. Current design trends do not promote our freedom, probably the opposite. The things around us are designed to keep us out in the name of ease of use, security, or good looks. But the user that uses something most easily, the most secure user, the happiest user, is the one that knows that how anything works. So, making something automatically work will cause a few moments of initial delight, but the effects in the long term are exactly the opposite. I realized this by showing the incredible advances in deep learning and neural image manipulation to friends and co-workers co during the past few years. People that don't understand the complexity of the system involved are the least impressed. Technology is magic for them and can do anything. There's a story I read when I was little which described a family, di a family dinner during which one of the adults starts floating over the table. Despite what one would think, the children are the ones that uh, are the least amazed. They are used to seeing amazing new things all the time. Adults, on the other hand, know that floating over the table is impossible and are genuinely surprised. Trying to make technology look like magic helps keep our users childlike, which as good as may that sound, it's not. You might wonder why I mentioned clickbait and fake news during in the, in the notes of the presentation. It's because I believe that fake news calls for univers universal backdoors and conspiracy theories all have one thing in common. They stem from the inability of the crowd to distinguish between what is impossible and what's possible, or improbable. The ability to do that in improves with a firmer understanding of how things work. Unless everything is reduced to a black box, only the elusive expert understands how, thi thi how things work. In fact, nobody does. All the things are just a uh, sum of black boxes, and any given expert can only know what one of those parts does. So. Nobody understands how the whole works. But let's go back a little bit to the design movements of yesteryear. Let's go back to Adolf Loos and modernism and his declaration on ornament is crime. Or to the Russian constructivists that thought all art was political and that building a USSR was a great art project. To the bulk of modernists that thought that art should adapt to the new era of the machine. We can also go to today's emotion, durable, an emotionally durable design that aims to save the environment by designing things that we, that we will love more as time passes. All those guys, and many, many more in the history of the art and design, thought that they could change the world with their creations. They thought they could make the lives of people better, some by promoting social status, others by diminishing it, some by promoting technology, and others by promoting mass con consumption. I believe that today's design trend, trends try to promote an easier life, but fail, actually promoting blissful ignorance. Do you know what the biggest search term by volume, on, by volume is on Google? Facebook. <laughs> Why? Because people can't distinguish a search term from URL. And number three is Google. I think this is our fault and we have to fix it. It has huge security implications and it's clearly a failure of our design. We are trapped in our bubble and we've lost track of the real results of our work. We think that anyone knows basic things about technology, because we do, but the reality is that many don't. And since we managed to get rid of manuals through intuitive design, now it's our job to teach them. 
There are many more examples of how current design fails, but I think the most spectacular manifestation is, fake, is Facebook's fake news problem. They try to reduce the unlimited complexity of a thing called news to the presence, to the presence or not of this. A small red flag. Of course, they managed to do the opposite of what they intended. It's deeply ingrained in, sil in Silicon Valley mentality. Simplify anything down to a single click. And that brings me to why it fails. It fails because our world is complex. Complexity is there and it is inevitable. The universe is complex. Our solutions to the problems caused by complexity usually involve adding even more complexity. In our effort to simplify things as designers, we end up just hiding complexity beh behind user in interfaces that make assumptions. By driving over the complexity with a road paving roller machine of a UI, we destroy all kinds of nuances people love to love. Just visit any kind of community that loves a certain something, be it coffee, tea, audio equipment, cars, whiskey, gaming, keyboards, jeans, desktop environments, whatever, and you will find that the discussion always gets down to the slight nuances that make each, other, each one's favorite thing unique to the point sometimes of absurdity. So let's go to typesetting. It's an example of the results of UI oversimplification. LaTeX might be intimidating, but it requires you to invest the time to learn everything about typesetting before you pro produce a very nice document. Word processors promise to make this easy, but in reality, they never allowed the masses to produce work comparable to that of professional typesetters. Why is that? Because typesetting is hard work. You have to know all about kerning and hinting and widows and orphans and pos positive and negative space, and no amount of, of buttons and nice e interface elements is going to make that e easier. It just provides a false sense of competence. So all the CVs I receive say, excellent use of Microsoft Word in the same paragraph in which they use spaces to write a line of sentence. We make the effort to build a million different options in our software, and then we go and hide them behind this. This essentially says, hey, I assume you're too stupid to change the settings. Please don't. <laughs> this doesn't mean that you ha should have a 500 tab settings dialog, but why hiding about config or Android developer settings so hard? And then there are the options that aren't even there. <laughs> On one hand, we try to promote open source software as something that provides freedoms, and then we turn around and take those freedoms away by hiding them behind comp compiler fl flags, as we know that our users cannot, don't know how to recompile our software. If this isn't two-faced, I don't know what is. So I think it's our duty as open source design to have a political agenda, to actually do try and change the world, to be something more than automated operators of A-B studies and usability testing, to care not only whether our user will do the task quickly and effortlessly, not only if she's going to engage more with her item, but also if she will leave the interaction happier, wiser, and why not, a better person. It's not a coincidence that Deepen Upton f thought, found that the computer skills of undergraduates dropped off between 1996 and 2006. It's the period of G. Steve Jobs' return to Apple and the dominance of just works. The same period saw an almost religious purge of anything that resembled the command line or programming from comu com consumer computers. They come without any hint of, com of programmability, their, form their former primary purpose. To be fair, this gave birth to excellent visual computer interactions and helped computers reach millions of people. I have nothing against that, but we took it too far. So what do I propose? To force everybody to code in assembler like real men? No, of course not. Technology must be accessible to everyone. It must have an easy on-ramp and not be intimidating. Is this possible? We talked about typesetting a few minutes ago. On one end, on one hand, you have LaTeX, which is steep and intimidating. On the other hand, you have Microsoft Word, which just promotes ignorance. I'm sorry. I have to take a sip. Okay. Is there a middle ground? I think Stack Edit and Markdown is a very good example of a middle ground. 
It doesn't look at hieroglyphics to an untrained eye. It is easy to learn. And a single row of buttons allows you to do most of the things you'd want to do in a document, while at the same time, you see exactly what the computer sees. After the few presses of the B button in a Markdown editor, if you're slightly interested, you understand that it all does is surround the word you are typing with double asterisks. And you'll be able to do it, saving yourself a trip to the toolbar. AutoCAD is another nice example of a closed source. It's a point, it says point is click SMS paint, but there's a nice little command line on the bottom that repeats every command you do, even if you click on it with a mouse. After a few times, you start learning what their commands are, and you can type them yourself. There's also a nice predictable shortcut scheme that uh, helps you work with shortcuts without having to go to the manual. So. Let's break it down to, a simple, to some simple rules. One, teach. You know those troubleshooters that never work? What, why not, instead of trying to fix the problem, you present your user with the steps he would take in order to understand why his printer or his internet access doesn't work? Teach them the process of the elimination and why are you, while you are doing this, explain to them w what DNS is and, what, and why this is probably the problem when you can reach the IP address and not do google.com. Two, ask politely to show more information. I'm pretty sure that there are millions of people that are curious of what happens between pressing their keyboard in the URL bar and seeing the web page they intended to see. So ask them politely, did you ever wonder what happens behind the scenes where, when you type the, here? Not only you get to show all the fancy things you do on every, uh, on every keystroke, but it also explains why you ask if you want to enable search suggestions, and why the answer shouldn't be, of course, why do you even ask? By the way, I've seen people pasting passwords on the URL bar to see if they are correct. <laughs> Three, use the jargon. Stop replacing intimidating jargon with softer words. It's confusing to those who know, it's different in every brand, a brand and makes for an awful awkward situation when you are trying to give or get help. These are the words that Samsung and LG use instead of color subsampling. Don't be patronizing. This is not a good 404 page. I like the hip language, but what this page says is frankly bullshit. There are no palumpas in the computer searching for your mistyped web page. <coughs> Check the spelling or go to the Wayback machine. And because design isn't always software, five, make repairs easy. Include a repair manual, link to disassembly videos, don't use glue. Embrace wear and tear, stop cherishing smoothness and newness. Scratches and marks show use and utility. Use that in your design. Six, make it replaceable, interchangeable, show its, in, show its inner workings. RevRap 3D printers are a very good example of what I'm talking about. You can see and learn exactly how they work, you can infinitely repair them, and you can upgrade them with parts you can buy off the shelf. And then you can go and build your own. Contrast that to regular printers, which are almost always cheaper to replace than to repair. Heck, sometimes it's cheaper to replace than buy new inks. And because we know nothing about them, they seem to never work. We have a certain focus on the tools nowadays and not the crafts. We have fixated on the digital tools that allow us to do crafts, and now people say that they, they know AutoCAD instead of architectural drafting. They say that they know Photoshop instead of graphic design or digital photo development. And that this hurts both the craft and the equivalent open source software, making them look inferior. If you know how to dig, the brand of the shovel shouldn't matter. So I think that what I described is what open source design, design should mean. But design is al always controversial, and as it, sh it should be. And so in order to avoid hijacking the term, I would like to call this approach <coughs> transparency. I invite you all to join me into creating examples of transparent design and put these ideas into even more concrete rules and approaches and influence the future of design. I have created a GitLab, uh, a GitHub organization, uh, which is uh, still empty, but I'd like to fill it with uh, examples, rules, and other things. 
that uh, would help future designers uh, follow this approach. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions. Yeah, we have some time for questions. This, there is one over there. Yeah. Um, so I would like to know why we should do idiocracy. Because uh, why we, we should? Uh, we shouldn't do idiocracy. Uh, we tend to idiocracy because uh, uh, the world two days uh, we some uh, talks about uh, how to make it easier for users and you just say don't they they have to learn I, I'm okay to learn but sometimes it's just too difficult because uh, there's a, a large diversity of users young uh, old people uh, not in, uh, computer engineers so uh, when, where do you I don't think it's about the level. I don't, that's why I said we don't need to make everybody code in assembler. Assembly is hard. We, we don't have to make things hard. We have to make them easy, but in the process, show the people what's happening behind the scenes. So when something goes wrong, which it will go, and we all know it, instead of just believing that printers came from hell, we understand that it's the roller thing in the printer that it's fault and then that we can go to the store and buy another and put it in there and that to be able to do that it it first means that the whole community requires the manufacturer to be like that so there was a 3d printer manufacturer who started uh, putting filament into cartridges like the like the regular printer guys do and they they didn't uh, manage to keep that uh, approach not even a year because everybody else uses interoperable filament and you can buy filament from, ev from everywhere and put it in your printer. So nobody could accept buying the proprietary thing. That's what I'd like to see. A design that makes users understand what's behind and that and then they want to learn and because they learn they are empowered to do things and not be controlled by the whatever scheme uh, is devised so that manufacturers for example can sell more printers i don't know if i answered the question So the question in a few words was why I was against the uh, about config warning and what about the users that don't want to learn. Actually, that page was put there because I anticipated uh, this kind of question. I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I think that instead of having that page and then a bunch of uh, options that are in JavaScript notation with dots, there should be no warning and then every option should have two lines of text. I'm sure that this is very short time needed compared to the time needed to implement an option in the code. Uh, that explains what is it and why uh, it should or it should not be clicked. And maybe for some especially uh, dangerous options there should be a warning 
near the specific option because in about config, until recently, it was the control tab switch between the latest tabs option and other options that were very dangerous and allow uh, disabling encryption and everything else. So bundling them all in the same basket and then telling the user, okay, go learn and then come back is much worse than describing what everything does and why he should or he should not click on it. But if you go into describing every line, then you're going to say, the user is going to say, oh, I see, I understand this. Um, I want to keep this. And how then, then you basically have to support every option going forward in this version. And I guess the point behind this... Okay, that's, that's a valid point, yeah. These are options that um, Firefox has for a specific use case, but it's not something that users should rely on. Yes, I, th that, is all, uh, that is a valid use case, and I understand that there might be backlash if you go and remove something that people use. Uh, and yeah, that's something that maybe should be discussed more. <laughs> or maybe you're just right. <laughs> Anything else? Or do I have more time? I don't know. Okay. Ah, okay, I will do that. Yeah, uh, sorry, it's uh, locked. <laughs> uh, I'll do that, but it's just uh, credits for the, except the, um, except the GitHub repo, the, all the others, there's just the credits for the videos and the artwork I used, but uh, I will uh, put them into Petabuff. Okay, thank you. Thanks.